suburban vent. Hey there with Old Forester. Yep, Old Forester. We're going to Beef and Bourbon at sick at the restaurant slash not really clubhouse, it's the restaurant. Yep. Called Six on the Six on James in Angola. We stopped by here um, last weekend. Yep. After. Had lunch. And we saw the event, so basically we're gonna have four course meal and old forester um, tasting at the same time. So we'll, old forester reps are coming to this little place. And we'll video it. That's what we do. Yep. Meantime, look at this crappy weather. Winter has not left. That's right. It's not really that bad. It's northern Indiana. Mid-February. Big lake. Not sure what lake it is, but there's some about four, well, about three or four lakes in this area, Angola, Indiana. Sure. All I know is one of them is called Snow Lake. That's pretty much it. Although, in a quarter mile, turn left. According to our map, Lake James, and I can't read what the other one says. There's the event place up there. It's a little busy. That's where we're headed. <clears throat> Take the second left, then your destination will be. Arrow is. Yeah. What the heck was that? We're here. <laughs> Help us to have the camera on. Yes. <laughs> you need a nap? No, it's just a little tired. Just staring at the the road and the snow coming down and the, all the grayness, so there's mm -hmm. you don't have any contrast in anything. So, although there's stark contrast to last weekend when it was blue skies. Yes, and we were out there and basically our no coats on. <laughs> not going to happen today. Nope, not today. But it's okay. It's only gonna. It's not even gonna amount to anything. So, yeah. but it's kind of pretty. Rolling hills. Okay, let's get some dinner. So we're here. So we're here. We're here. And we're starting with our first. Right off the bat, I mean, yeah. well. I don't know if I'm going to start off with that one yet because that's an Old Forester single barrel. 18.7, so I doesn't mention any of the proof on here. And then we go to that one, and that one, and then down to this one, that one. But we get food. Yum. So the first course is not an appetizer, it is a bourbon. It's going to be the Six on James Old Forester Single Barrel Bourbon, served in meat, which is exactly the way we like to drink it. So. Oh, it smells good. Mm -mm -mm. Make sure my hair and everything looks good. That's right. Got to look good for camera. Yeah. It smells yummy. I smell on... Um, I smell some brown sugar and some leather. 
Not real ethanol. -y. It smells so good. Yum. Hi. Good. How are you? I do. Big yes. fans. We're big fans. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Well, my name's Katie. I actually work for the um, distributor okay. for Brown Foreman, who yeah. owns um, Old Forester. Siobhan said you have a YouTube channel. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. We do. We just I'll have gotta to check it out. Yeah. Right, so yeah. it's bourbon, whiskey, everything. So I mean. We thought we had a big collection until we came here. We we're like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Marty is a huge fan yeah. of Collective Bourbon. Yes. So. We like this yeah. place already. Yeah. Are you local? <laughs> um, we're South from Elkhart. Elkhart. Elkhart? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so not too far of a drive. No, what, not, no. Not, not Over like an hour. Hour? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, I know. Have you had any Old Forester single barrel selections? Um, we have. Okay. Um, from what, Wise Guys? From Wise Guys out of Valparaiso. And okay. We, that's probably pretty much it. And it's okay. really good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We, we, we are big, huge fans of Old Forester. So, so uh, this is their Old Forester single barrel selection. Okay. So uh, there is an option to do a, a cast strength or a 100 proof. We typically recommend 100 proof for the bars and restaurants. It's the better option. Oh, okay. uh, more approachable, obviously. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Yes. So um, with the Old Forester, like your typical 86 or 100 proof Old Forester mm -hmm. marks, those are going to be blends of about 100 to 200 barrels. Oh, wow. This is just one single barrel. So mm -hmm. the master distiller will go through the rick house and pick his favorite barrels, the barrels that he thinks can stand up by themselves and not have to be blended. Some barrels, yeah. they just have to be married together in order to produce the, the best result. But some barrels really stick out to the distiller. So he picks those barrels out and then they end up uh, going into a separate collection. And then he actually goes through and for this barrel, uh, we told him what flavor profiles Marty was looking for. Oh, okay. um, a little yeah. bit more of a smoky, spicy, um, still 100 proof, but she likes to taste a little bit of alcohol. She really wants a little bit yeah. more of the burn, so we let him know that's what she was looking for. Um, so he narrowed this down um, after he selected from a really large group into a group of three different barrels and then selected this one. Yeah. So this is the only um, place that you can get this exact permit. I know that's you're how they get with yeah. single barrels. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you can only get it in the gift shop. Yes. And we, that's how we our collection got out of hand. <laughs> you yeah. can only get it here, so we bought it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Exactly. So, totally love um, it. so what we're going to do tonight is we're starting you actually okay. with the, uh, oh, the yeah. Old Forester single barrel selection for the Six on James. And then we're going to walk you through the taste. Have you been to the distillery? Mm -hmm. Have you done the taste through history? Not the taste through history. Okay, there, that is one of the options, like after a tour, to do the taste through history. So what we're doing is the taste through history, which starts with the 1870, 1897, 1910, and 1920 from Old Forester, and basically what those um, bourbon. There's, there's, where's 1924? No. They have it. They do have it. We just we're, we only did five courses, but they they have I mean, a couple bottles are, in 1924. You know. I'm glad that you that you know about 1924. Yes, uh, we just I want to say that came out about a month ago. So I still think they do have a bottle or two on the shelf. Um, but we are going to, or each of these bourbons basically signify a special time in bourbon history and yeah. in the history of the distillery. So um, as your bourbons come out, I will come back and talk to you and give you a little bit of information about all awesome. of them. Awesome. And this is already delicious. Yeah. It's a really nice pick. I'm very, yeah, yeah, I'm very like, happy with it. I like so. the heat. Uh, yes. And it's funny for 100 proof. It's, it's, I think it drinks hotter than 100 proof. But yeah. And that's what Marty likes. So yeah, it, it was punching. spot on. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, it smells so mm. good. Too. Glad you like it. All right, Ooh, I will I be did. back uh, with my name is Katie. Katie, what's okay. your name? Dawn and Mike. Dawn and Mike. Dad, I'm nice Mike. She's Mike. Dawn. Okay. I'm the <laughs> Very nice one. to meet you. <laughs> and I will be back when um, the next bourbon is served. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, what do you think? That's really good. You know. It's got a good smell. Good nose. Yeah. I can smell the sugar, the brown sugar, the caramel. It, it's really creme brulee to me. On the nose. Yeah. Little hint of the the alcohol at the end. That just smells so good. Yeah. Like, I could just smell it all day. It's nice and thick. It's got a good viscous yeah. mouthfeel. It's got mm -hmm. strong legs, for sure. It's got a long finish, sweet finish. Uh, what was the uh, proof on it? 100 proof. 100 proof? Yeah, 100 yeah, proof single barrel. It doesn't taste... That, that proof is just right. It's just. To me, that heat is like in the back of your throat. 
but not um, overpowering. So. Oh, I like that a lot. I know. I mean, it's I my. Know. It's definitely my character with, yeah, with that, the profile. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, it's that. So um, hard, the sugary crust on a cream brulee. You know that the yeah. dessert. You say that a lot, but um, because I'm not a real big fan of creme brulee, because I don't think I really taste a whole lot of. I don't taste a whole lot of uh, creme brulee notes and things. Maybe it's just that burnt well, sugar. It's, it's, yeah, I, I, it's, it's just a form of burnt sugar to me. Yeah. So whether it's the the burnt outer skin of a, a marshmallow, mm -hmm. campfire marshmallow. So I'm wondering, this one has a black label on it, and it says it's single barrel, but the one, the Old Forester that we try at... Blue label? Um, yeah, Blue label. So that must not be single barrel, it just might be just Old Forester uh, um, yeah. store pick, because those seem to be, well, at least the two that we have from Wise Guys are like in the 120 plus range. Yeah. So, but you don't have to ask uh, Katie. Yeah. We might be here a while. We might be. Take our time. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. We're still a little bit fine, but yeah. Oh, so far, so far, it's so delicious. Isn't that fantastic? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's really good. Yeah. And uh, we've got plenty on hand, so if you guys want to take some bottles home. Oh, we will. Never too early start thinking about Christmas. Oh, right. <laughs> and and also, we are offering complimentary engravings, so if you want to customize some of those, we, we will. some bottles in Indy so that they can get done and then they will get sent. Oh yeah, we will definitely do that. That's fine. It just means we have to come back. Right? Yeah. I know. We've been telling all week. We've been talking to talking to everybody about you guys. We're like, you guys are gonna go. So thank you so much. We love it. Oh, thank you. You too. What's in the What's in the bag now? Oh, I don't know yet. On our chair, they left us a little goodie bag. And it's just not a goodie bag just for us. It's part of the event. <laughs> But, yeah, looks like we got a cute little pen. Oh, I love these pens. The old Forester. It's like the stylus on the end. Oh, Ooh, good. Nice. I like that. But oh, wait, there's more. There's more. Yeah. Whoops, put that away. And, oh, cute. Little old Forester socks. Oh, what's oh, on there? Bottles? And a yeah, maze? little bottles. Yeah. The old forester established established 1916, is that what it says? No, 1816. 1816. 1816. Yeah. So um in a little bit we're going to go through the history. We're gonna drink the history of, yep. of old forester. I know we did a tasting when we were at the Old Forester. I just don't know if it was called that. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. We'll it doesn't do matter. It it's all yummy. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did you get any banana? Banana. Um, kind of like an old uh, Bananas Foster, you know, ones that, that has alcohol in it, so. Dang, that is, it's a, a hot smooth, you know? I feel like I'm going to need like eight bottles of this. I could that is so good. I could definitely have a case of this and not yeah. be a problem. Yeah. So good. Well, other than paying for it, that is. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't mind having a case on hand. But they may want me to actually pay for it before I leave. This is a really cute place. Really, really, really cute place. Yep. I love all the, like, in fact, just so funny, um, when we were here last week, they were talking about one of their, I think one of their patrons makes these little signs that have, like, all the little collected little uh, metal pieces put together, art. Oh. Oh, cool. And there's one over there. It's a, it's a six. Oh, yeah. It's all the metal pieces over there. And I love how, I love how dark it is in here. Like, I'm kind of feeling like we should change the color of our speakeasy now. <laughs> So a little darker even. We you know? could. Because it is kind of a, I want to say a dark blue, like a dark, but it might like be a, a black. Smoky, a dark blue black. Yeah. I do like that. You know, but you know what I do I like is the, this. I like that wood wainscoting. 
Yeah. And I totally love these lights that are hung like that. So. Yeah. Kind yeah, of a so ship the nautical to... theme. But they're all bottles. They're yeah. all. Um, we got plenty of bottles we can, you know, either A finish booze bottles. or B cut and There's have them. Really like. Taylor. Let's totally do something. And I can't about. see that one. That's gin. Taylor. That's old Fitz. Gerald, you right there. You should see what those are just based off my bottles. Yeah. See how good you are, huh? I think that in the far end might be dragon's milk. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. There's I old fits. Like it might be uh, Jim Beam. Oh, it might be a Jim Beam at the end. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but anyway. And that was good already. So normally when we're doing a tasting, we like always put water in it and then swish it around and dip it up. Oh no, we're gonna get fresh glasses every time. Yeah. I think we already have an old first glass, but I mean, so cool. So this is the 1870 original small batch, light and soft, shortbread, sweet citrus, honeysuckle, hint of clove, and nutmeg. Oh wait, let's see if we can hit all those. Yeah. Shortbread. You know what? I don't like that's how that, that tin of cookies that are shortbread cookies. Yeah. I don't like those cookies because they're greasy. But it doesn't really have a smell. Shortbread? I don't know. Sure. It smells like this. Mmm. I mean, is there a is there a I don't know. I don't know what's gonna say. Sweet citrus? Honey honeysuckle? Sweet citrus. That smells good. I got a little perfumey on it too. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. Oh wow. Oh, much lighter. Yeah, much lighter. I mean, I forgot. Much more approachable. Yeah, it's definitely soft and right. Love. Yeah, I had forgotten what. Um, this tastes like, and if I'm not mistaken, we'll have to ask her, but I, be, I believe this is the 86 proof. Mm. It would make sense if it is. I mean, there's no heat. Like, no. great beginner, beginner um, bourbon. Well, I guess. It's, it, it's, it's a good one to start beginner chasing, um, chasing meat, tap, drinking it neat. I mean, yes. because just because it's low proof for us, I mean, it's kind of hard to um, it's hard to say because we're so used to so many different proofs. But if you wanted to try something neat, that would be a good one to start. I think. Yeah. Yep. So anyway. So definitely, it's not as sweet on the palate. I get more vanilla than. Sugar, brown sugar, fish. It's very light. Yeah, it's very light. Yeah, very light, almost, almost watery, but it's still thick. It's, it's not a watery yeah. mouth. Oh, well, here she comes. Yeah. Yes, it's yummy. We're on 1870. Are you familiar? Um, Maybe, yes. but... We don't drink it often, okay. but I think it's a lower so, proof, I'm assuming. Yeah, so George Garvin Brown was the founder of Old Forster. Uh, Brown Foreman, if you're familiar with that name, they actually own Old Forster, Jack Daniels, with the Reserve, so that comes from that family name of George Garvin Brown. So he was the first uh, one that actually said, let's... They used to just get the uh, whiskey right out of the barrel. He said, let's put it into bottles, let's make it really legitimate. Uh, seal that bottle up to make sure that they know that it's high quality and it comes from that same distillery and no one's tampered with it. And so 1870 is the year that he did that. Uh, so the Forester basically originated in 1870, so that's what this uh, whiskey is named after. Oh, and so they, is that the old Forester's claim to fame? Is it the first one to bottle bourbon? Yeah, first bottle bourbon. Yes. Everybody has a first bourbon. something, right? You know? They all do. They yeah. all, they, some of them claim the same things. It just yeah. kind of is like, okay, look back in the history books and see what actually happened. Yeah. Yeah. But um, they were the first distillery on that Whiskey Row area. There's a ton of history. Uh, they were one of the uh, few that was able to stay open during Prohibition. Oh, also, yeah. um, they had that medicinal. Seven. Yeah, they had the, the medicinal grant. I mean, uh, I feel sick. So I'm oh, 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 look what she brought. Yeah, that looks so nice. 
Well, I mean, it's just what, that's what was so fun for us when we started just going to the trail and all that stuff. It's just it's just so stories and history yeah. are just so much fun. Oh, there's yeah. so much. It's amazing, and that's why I really like this program that Old Foresters put together. Yeah. Um, it is specifically called the Taster History because yeah. there is so much history related to, especially Old Forester brand yeah. and distillery. So. All right, well, yeah. enjoy your shirt. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, I know, isn't it cute? Yes, that so is, I've never seen the little boards like that. I, I really do like it. I mean, Very it's nice. the fun, right? Yes, so, definitely. So are you down in, are you from Kentucky or area? No, I I live here in Angola, actually. Oh. Um, most of my territory is like Fort Wayne, Angola, these areas. But I've been, um, I worked for Beam Suntory over in the Detroit area. But I'm originally from Coldwater, if you're familiar with Coldwater. Yep. It's 20 minutes north of here. Yeah. And we just love this kind of stuff, so it's all different. Yeah. So. Yeah. I know, I mean, each of these is like, the, you know, when they came up with the menu, they wanted it to pair with the bourbon. So yeah. it's just fun to kind of yeah. have that experience. So. so do you work for, is it R&DC? I work for R&DC. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yep. Are you familiar yeah. with R&DC? Republic National Distributing Company. Um, yeah. We're uh, in like, I don't know, 35, 40 states, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So. so, I mean, that's yeah. what's great. It's cool for you to work, work for R&DC. Yep, R&DC. The, um, it's just, just not old horse. It's just... Oh, I have oh, so many different yeah. bourbons, yeah. I have tequila, rum, bourbon, oh vodka, gosh. gin, everything. Yeah. Oh, you're the dangerous girl. Yeah, yeah have, I've got it all. Do you have a favorite bourbon? Uh, the, I guess of the, of or the spirit. Time. I really love Old Forester 1910. Yeah, it's yeah. My, yep. that's my That's jam my, too. my go-to. Yeah. I, I mean, I sell Woodford, obviously. Same yeah. company owns. I love Double Oak. I love Woodford, but yeah. 1910 is like my... If I have to pick, that's why. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I kinda, agree. I'm kinda into the blends right now with like, I, I love Bardstown Discovery and oh, first I, yeah. 2XO. Yeah, but we have Bardstown Good grief, $200 a pop. Yeah, it's a little like, crazy. There are so many really good options yeah. right now. It's yeah. amazing you don't, how it's changed. You don't need to buy Blanton's because there's a lot of good bourbons. There you go. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, I will be back for the next Katie. course, okay? Thank All you. Right. Yeah. This is so cute. Look at this. Oh my gosh. I told totally got to take All right, so course number two. Drink was. So, course number two was Old Forester 1870. Yeah. And it's paired with a charcuterie board. Charcuterie. Charcuterie board, which has two Italian meats, two Italian cheeses. One's green, which is odd to me anyway. Well, it's and odd then, because it might be blue cheese. <laughs> and then. Marcona almonds and a slice of fig bread and whatever that uh, meat was really pairs well. Yeah, probably either Genoa or um, prosciutto. One of those. But, right. Yeah, good. I'm gonna try the fig bread. You have fig bread? I didn't get fig bread. No. Okay. No. It's okay. You enjoy it. Okay. That's a real savory. This is some form of cheese, but I'm assuming it's the bread. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see how it pairs. Yeah. Oh, another. Oh, that made that. That turned that 1870 into something really, really rich. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is good. That definitely changed the complexity of it. Yeah. Let's see. So. What's left of it, right? What's left of it. Looks more like cheese, but. Might be. Maybe we didn't get bread. <laughs> Either way, it's yummy. It was a sword fight. With the skewers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, so, 1897. Um, what I was saying is, are you familiar with the bottle of Bond? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So bonded whiskey, what that means, it's bonded bourbon. So basically, uh, a lot of distilleries and bootleggers were just making really bad bourbon. And some of it was not good for you. It could actually make you go blind because they weren't cutting the proper heads and tails um, off. So it was full of really bad fusel alcohols that can, again, hurt you, uh, make you go blind. So what happened is they created, the government created the Bottled and Bond Act in 1897. Uh, this has a couple different rules. First, it has to be distilled in one distilling season. It has to be aged in a government-approved uh, 
um, warehouse or rack house, and then it also has to be 100 proof. So that was just their way of ensuring high quality and that the bourbon was safe for you. So that's the bottle bond act. There are a lot of uh, bonded bourbons out on the market, but uh, 1897 was uh, the mark that they decided uh, would just signify. It's, it's, it is bottle the bond, and that just signifies the bottle the bond act and how important that was in the history of Old Forester and in the history of bourbon. So that's where 1897 comes from. And 100 proof, right? 100 proof, yep, exactly where it has to be. Yep. Like Just it. like the single barrel, it's perfect out of 100 proof, in my opinion. So, so far, something, anything I've tried so far has been delicious. Yeah. I'm so glad you tried it. Which we know we love. We love yes. it. It's really going to stink if we don't like 1924. We will, though, right? I'm sure we will. Yeah, Just totally will. It's right. like a treat. Yeah. So is it really a 1920? Is it really a brown Corman product? Is I thought someone said it might be kind of well. I should say no. That was that was travelers. No, I'm, I'm, no, no, no. I'm thinking um, people can call it uh, King of Kentucky Junior. King like of Kentucky is a brown Corman product. Yeah. yeah. So I'm wondering. They're saying that that's kind of like the King of Kentucky. So King Junior of Kentucky is like, about like I would say 14 to 15 years age. The 1924 is the same Nashville as King of Kentucky, which Brown Corman owns also, um, at about 10 years. Okay. So yeah, it's Delicious. it's very wonderful. You're yeah. going to enjoy it. King of Kentucky is extremely difficult to come by. So yeah. Yes. The fact that we've got a little bit younger, like you said, King of Kentucky Junior. Yeah. But I think You'll most, enjoy it. most bourbons at the 10 year mark from different distilleries have really, I, I just really top notch really. Yeah. So. Oh, I mean, it's really cool. it's too yeah. Long, right? it seems that like age. it's a great middle of the road. Yeah, but definitely. Yeah. Good. Yeah, we like it. All right. Yeah. So thank you. So what do you think? Oh, I was just going to drink it. Oh. Because I know I like it already, but you know. 1897, middle of bottle of smells delicious. It's like the others. You know, it's got a little more um, ethanol to the nose. Still very. Still very spicy, like baking spices, um, brown sugar, heavy brown sugar to me. Mm, it's so smooth smelling. You can you can tell it's a hundred proof. Not like the first hundred proof single barrel um, that we had. It's actually punch heat go away. But it's a really smooth, uh, sweet finish, I think. Getting a little bit of oak, not strong oak, but mostly just sweet. We'll see what you think. What you got? What you got, baby? 1897. I was, for some reason, I looked down and I thought it said 19. Nope. 1897 was the year they enacted the Bottle and Bond Act. So we're pairing this with... Wait, wait. Which also happens to be the first law... Oh, for the, uh, like, consumer protection. The FDA? Yeah, kind of like yeah. the predecessor yeah. to that. Gotcha. Yeah. And we're pairing tonight's 1897 with a... A berry salad. Nuts and berry salad. Nuts and berry salad. Oh, it's delicious. Yeah. Hold it down so I can see it. Yeah. It has strawberries and blackberries. Some nuts in here. And salad. And salad. All right, what do you got? Definitely more, a little bit more proof, a little bit more heat than the predecessor. A little bit sweeter, a little thinner. Oh no, not as thin as the pre previous one, but still thin. Kind of a hot finish, so I'm getting the alcohol more. It feels a little more oily in my mouth. What do you think? Yeah, kind of oily. Yeah. Oh, well, now that I have a second sip, it's got a long brown sugar finish. Yeah, super sweet. I don't know if this, I think uh, the second one, the 1870, was sweeter. You think? Yeah. So we'll see what it what it's like paired with a salad. Salad. Good? 
So, what do you think about pairing that bourbon with this salad, this fruit and nut? Just in general. I don't know if it's a matter of um, pairing it with a salad versus it's just part of the, the flow of the meal, the bigger meal. Yeah. But because right, right now, it feels like it 100% just hits the spot. Like, I feel like it's in a, a point in the meal where we're kind of sort of almost, I feel like maybe cleansing our palate a little bit. The dressing is kind of oily based, and I think it also, I won't say it very loud, but <coughs> cilantro, I think is part of the dressing. Um, so it's a little refreshing and clean. So I do, would I go to a restaurant and order a salad and a bourbon? Because I think it would go together. Not necessarily. It'd probably be more the case that I'd be drinking a bourbon and then, you know, eating a salad as part of the meal. So, so I don't think it really. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, but it doesn't. It doesn't throw either side. Like the salad doesn't taste bad drinking the bourbon and vice versa. So. But you could almost do a pairing with a cheese and a bourbon. Yeah. And then do another one with a bruschetta and a bourbon. But, and then do maybe Oh, nuts. yeah. Like bruschetta? Yeah. Like bruschetta. bruschetta. Um, also, because this is a berry and nut salad, uh, because it has berries in it, I think it, it, it's okay. I don't know you would have a salad that has, like, some other things in it, too. I mean, some kind of crazy stuff, but I think it works well. Mm-hmm. So it's a great pick. The salad is fantastic. So, anyway, that's what I think. Okay. So, we're getting ready to do course number four. And then we're also, it's going to be paired with Old Forester 1910, which is, what do we say, 93 proof. 1910 and 1920, which is the last course coming up, I think, are two of our favorites. But, anyway, 1910, course number four, is going to be a 16-ounce Lens Heritage Angus Dry Aged USDA Prime Boneless Ribeye. Caramelized onions, sauteed mushroom, ratatouille, and potatoes fondant. Oh. Also known as deliciousness. Ratatouille. Because it's fun to say ratatouille. What is ratatouille? Is it like vegetable? It's a movie. Is it root, is it root it's vegetable? It's a Disney movie with a rat. Other than that. <laughs> he's going to go, like, like the chef. The Swedish chef. <laughs> but not quite. <laughs> Anyway, I feel like we need some more protein because we're going to be sitting here a while. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> oh, she's back. Oh, I'm back. She brings... You're our friend. More, yeah. I know, Lucky right? me. Right here. Yeah, we 1910. Oh. One, two, three, and four. One of my favorites, about this with you. Yeah. Oh, 1910? I really am digging that 1897. Oh, man. But that barrel pick is the winner by far. Oh, this all is the one? Yeah, the yeah. all the different nuances. Yes. That I got from it was hard to Well, I got my, I mean, 1897. I haven't had it in a while, and like you said, it's delicious. Super smooth, super easy to drink. Mm-hmm. For a bottle of bond, it's really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like she always says approachable. It means approachable is another word for it doesn't suck. <laughs> it's not god awful. I mean, they're all, they're all good. On. All right, so this is 1910. Yeah. Even though she put it on my 1920. She got. She's dyslexic. Yeah. So this is creamy and charred oak, apricot, caramel, buttercream, and woody vanilla. So smooth. Uh-oh. Band's gonna start. <laughs> oh, that's really candy, candy-ish. Light. Um, my nose is starting to run. For but 93 proof, what do you think? It's definitely you don't you don't feel any of the heat, yeah. any of the proof. Um, I forgot they went down. They went up. It was 100. Now we went from 100 down to 93. What's the next one? 115. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Here comes Katie. 
Okay. There she goes. 1910, girl. As he said, I was like, I think you have new whiskey. Yes, so, yep. 1910. In 1910, there was a fire in the bottling oh, line at yeah. the distillery. So they had a bunch of matured, uh, ready to bottle bourbon that they couldn't bottle. They weren't really sure what to do with it, so they had some new charred oak barrels and they decided to transfer it. So they didn't want it to age for too long, and they decided to just put it into new barrels. So this is basically your first like double barrel bourbon. They kind of did it on accident. But when they emptied, um, after six months or so, once the bottle of wine was back up and running, uh, once they emptied those uh, barrels, they were like, what did we just do? They had no idea what the result would be, and it was You're absolutely welcome. wonderful. Um, obviously, a lot of double barrel bourbon, just like Woodford Reserve Double Oak, yeah. super, super popular. And this is really the first uh, double barrel bourbon. So, so two. that's what happened. Two, the first, all oh, forced to the first to bottle. Yeah. And the first double oak by, by accident. accident. Yeah, by accident. But they didn't have a Rick House fall like Martin's. Oh, yeah, everybody has little like quirky I mean, stories as to what happened. Isn't that, that crazy? Randomly, they're like, oh, that tastes really good. Yeah, <laughs> so, for sure. Yeah, but that's Happy. where 1910 came from. So it's 93 proof. Um, out of all of the, honestly, probably my entire bourbon portfolio, I saw a lot of brands. 1910 yeah. is my favorite by far. Yeah, I do love I it. I really love it. I think it's well balanced. Um, I appreciate the 93 proof because I can have a couple. Yeah. I like to have a couple. Yeah. I like to have just one or two. So yeah. I appreciate that it's a little bit lower proof. So. We do a lot of bourbon tastings with our neighbors, and be honest with you, you're right. We, we, are, we like the higher proof, but when we were, like, maybe flash backwards four years ago, we were doing a lot lower proof, and so we do five, six, seven of these yeah. at night, and now we do that at the high proof. You cannot do that, yeah. to your point, all right? We're just like, thank God they can walk home, right? And I like to, like, actively drink. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. A, you know, I it's like the shit of drinking, so with yeah. something like 1920, yeah. which is 115 proof, that gets a little dangerous. Yeah. So, uh, because of the secondary barrel aging, as you both know, bourbon experts, uh, you're going to get more of the smoky, sweet, caramel flavors that you're yeah. getting from the second exposure to a new chardo barrel. So, I think it's lovely. It will pair perfectly with your steaks. Yes. yes I can promise steaks. you that. I'm looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah. So, I was really yeah. happy with how they lined up. Yeah. We actually thought about starting with the single barrel, or ending with the single yeah. barrel, but because 1910, in my opinion, pairs so perfectly with steaks, we moved the single barrel to yeah. the very beginning. So I love all line up that way. Yeah, so, it's perfect. Yeah, I think you'll really enjoy uh, yeah. the pairing. Yeah, for sure. You're awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. So bring on the steak. Oh my goodness. The food just came out. Look at this. Ooh. Good stuff. Ribeye. Ribeye. Potato stacks. Um, what does it say? Potatoes fondant. Oh. And this is a rat tattooey. Oh, yummy. Course number four with 1910. Cheers. Very All right, what do you think about this pairing with the uh, 93 proof and steak? Well, you definitely feel the the proof more with this. It might be the pepper, it might be the spices, or whatever, but it's definitely you feel the heat. But it pairs well. I mean, I think it makes it more more rich. Yep, brings out maybe it's the fat, but it brings out another level to the bourbon. Yeah. 